I have gone round and round, uh, basically, about what match WWE should put on first, whether if it's Seth Rollins versus John Cena or Seth Rollins versus Sting. And honestly, in my mind, I know that John Cena is the major star here. Um, John Cena is the exclamation point in WWE. I feel that he is the most important person. But honestly, in my mind, I know that they're trying to make the United States Championship mean something. But honestly, even putting the WWE uh, title on before the United States Championship, match isn't going to be enough to bring to life the United States title. They're doing a lot uh, to make this title mean something, but honestly, in the past few weeks that Seth Rollins has not been defending it on uh, Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, uh, much like how uh, John Cena was defending it every show um, since uh, WrestleMania 31, um, you can see that that title is starting to just become um, just... A, a title. Just with WWE had made it before, hey, we're going to put this championship on you. Uh, this is going to mean that you're going to mean more, um, but in the long run, you're going to lose a lot of matches in order to set up other matches. Uh, you'll, you won't lose the title for a long time, but you're also not going to win any matches for a long time. That's sort of the way I think about the United States title. So I believe at Night of Champions, John Cena versus Seth Rollins will go on in the middle of the show, um, leaving the main event uh, for Seth Rollins going up against Sting. Um, you know, I, in my mind, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, the whole basis of the show was built up around Seth Rollins versus Triple H. And uh, I was trying to figure out how they were going to get to that point because I don't think they're going to be doing it in October at um, Hell in the Cell. I think it's actually going to be the next month um, down the road in uh, November, which would be Survivor Series. I think that's where you set up that match to see who the better champion is, who's got the bigger balls, who's the guy really running the WWE, um, and the authority throwing it down and saying they've had enough to Seth Rollins, um, getting them into trouble. He's already lost uh, Kane. He's already lost J&J Security. Um, he's, he's found ways to hold on to these championships, but uh, he keeps trying to put himself over and keeps trying to, to make him bigger than Triple H, and there's only one way you can prove who is bigger and who is better, and only one way to see who's going to shut um, their mouth, pretty much. So uh, we'll see what goes down with that one. But uh, honestly, in my mind, I think that Cena is going to be walking out um, empty-handed. I think that Rollins is going to win both of his matches. I think that he's still going to be the ultimate champion, holding on to the United States title as well as the WWE title. And um, even though I think that a lot of people think that Rollins is boring, um, I, I think that when you watch Rollins' matches, he definitely deserves to be in the spot that he's in. Um, he's one of the most entertaining guys in all of WWE. Um, you know, John Cena has said himself, um, that, uh, he wants to get that championship and, uh, he wants to make it mean something inside of WWE, but, uh, I don't think that that's going to be coming here. Uh, I think the scene is definitely going to be on the chase because honestly, when you think about it, do you see Sting wrestling at Hell in the Cell? Um, and then I don't even want to start the conversation of Rock being champion from months ago, where people thought that Rock was going to show up at the Rumble. Uh, he was going to beat Punk, become WWE champion, and then we weren't going to even see him until WrestleMania. And people were starting the debate, basically saying, Rock can't be champion because Rock doesn't work house shows. Rock, you know, it's not going to be on every television. This, that, and the other. People didn't even think Rock was going to show up at the Elimination Chamber. And Rock was there. He had a match against CM Punk. It was a good match. Uh, honestly, I think the numbers were a little bit down from where people thought they were going to be because it wasn't the Royal Rumble. It wasn't uh, um, WrestleMania, but still, they, they, they did a better number than they had done in the past for the Elimination Chamber. It just wasn't the big, huge rock number that he normally brings in because I think they used him you know, three consecutive months in a row. People already knew that the WrestleMania match was going to mean more in the long run. Um, so you know, that, that's what they went with instead of buying the rematch at Elimination Chamber. But um, this is a hard one. I mean, this is a tough one. How do you not say that Cena beats Rollins? Cena's been on the, on, on the chase. I keep looking at this picture of Cena and Rollins, the sort of Knight of Champions card that they have here, and keep thinking about, you know, Cena winning the WWE Championship for the 16th time. But the match isn't even for that. Just You see Rollins holding both of these belts. You see Cena going up against them. You think that this is going to be it. Um, I don't know. Why didn't they do like a, a, a three-way? Not three-way. doesn't make much sense. But, you know, you know the, the guy who wins gets to pick the belts he wants. Because even if you're Cena and, and you beat Rollins, you really get to pick that you want the United States Championship. Maybe you say that you want the WWE Championship to mean more when you win it for the 16th time. I don't know. But... Uh, 
I just don't see Cena winning, and um, maybe Cena gets involved later in the show with uh, Sting, but uh, as of right now, I think Rollins is walking out. Rollins is going to beat Cena, and then we'll see what happens with Rollins versus Sting. Sting versus Seth Rollins in the main event. This is going to be a fun one. Everybody knows the story. Basically, Sting has only been in WWE um, for a good hot minute. You know, he made his debut earlier this year. Well, I guess he made his debut late late last year at Survivor Series. And then he came in and he did the whole deal with getting the guys their jobs back right before the Royal Rumble. And then he wrestled in his first match in WWE at uh, WrestleMania 31. This is a guy that honestly has been rumored um, to be joining WWE for years and years. People, when they drew out their WCW versus WWF cards, um, you know, they would always put Sting going up against the big guys. And, uh, you know, Sting was WCW. And Sting was WCW until basically he was the guy riding the ship uh, down into the middle of the ocean. You know, he was one of the guys that rode it all the way. Uh, he never made the jump, even though people always thought that he should have. And, you know, there was offers but one thing led to another and Sting stayed where he wanted to because he had the feelings that they just wouldn't use him uh the way that uh you know he should be used they felt that they would kill his character and uh, he wouldn't have any value inside of wrestling he chose to go to TNA um wrestling for them for years and years before finally just saying no I only got one life uh I got to uh, basically you know give it a shot and see what happens you know what's the worst uh, that's going to happen by them going over there. And immediately, um, WWE takes Sting in. Uh, they use him as a big feature, um, giving him his own um, uh, you know, Greatest Hits DVD, um, trying to sell that WCW um, tape library. And uh, there's going to be a documentary coming out on, on him sooner than later. Uh, he was a big hit with the uh, Monday Night War series, being able to get him interviewed and get his sides uh, to see what is going on. If you bought volume one uh, of the DVD set, you actually get to see a sit-down debate or discussion, I guess you can say, between Sting and Triple H. So I think that they've honestly got their money's worth out of this guy before even putting him into the ring. And then WrestleMania 31, um, you know, him versus Triple H was definitely one of the most discussed matches, what was going to be going down. People were excited to see Sting. And uh, if Sting really had any thoughts about what WWE was going to be doing with him and if they were going to give him, you know, sort of, uh, he talked about it in an old interview, um, basically that, uh, you know, when Booker T came in, The Rock said, who are you? And, you know, Sting as being the ultimate WCW legend, uh, looked at this as being the most disrespectful thing that they could have done, even though that this was The Rock's gimmick and The Rock was saying it to anybody, no matter if it was Undertaker, Triple H, Chris Jericho, um, everybody got the who are you from The Rock to set up, you know, it doesn't matter what your name is, or <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time, but <laughs> that was pretty fun, but, um, um, you know, Disting chose to go other places and wrestle, um, and, uh, I, you know, WrestleMania 31, you know, he was the guy who closed out the weekend with him and Bo Dallas on the WWE Network, because I think he was the one guy that people really wanted to see inside of a WWE ring at WrestleMania on the grandest stage of them all, because, Nobody ever thought it was ever going to happen, and I don't think you're ever going to see another guy like that. I mean, if you think about it right now, um, some of the best wrestlers in the world are wrestling in Japan, whether if it's, you know, an American guy like AJ Styles or Nakamura or Okada or things like that, and... You know, there's some buzz about people wanting to see these guys get signed and being brought over to WWE, but there's not this want or demand like there was for Sting for years, wanting to see Sting versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 27, WrestleMania 28, um, the WrestleMania 30 when Sting was a free agent and he wasn't with TNA anymore. Um, there was definite, you know, want and demand for this guy. Um, Sting being brought in, uh, even though his record is 0-1, being put directly into the main event, um, Sting shows up in a magical box that's supposed to be holding Seth Rollins' statue. Um, you know, instead, Seth Rollins jumps out of the. I'm sorry, uh, Sting jumps out of the box, starts attacking Seth Rollins. Um, you know, you know, the authority bailed out of there. Um, once they make it to the back, you're supposed to immediately turn on the WWE Network. You see. 
Um, Seth Rollins, Triple H, and Stephanie walking through the tunnels. You know, they start yelling, you know, who does this guy think he is that he can just show up here and interrupt this um, statue ceremony and, and ruin something special that's supposed to be there for the authority. So as a way to teach him a lesson, they put Seth Rollins versus Sting into the WWE Championship match, the main event of Night of Champions. And this is supposed to be where Seth Rollins teaches Sting a lesson. Honestly, in my mind, when it comes down to it, if you think about WrestleMania 31, I think WWE loved having Sting there, but they also don't have the most, um, what do I want to say here? What's the, they don't have the most, uh, uh, it's not respect. They don't, they don't have the most trust in the guy because of his age, being able to, to move around and wrestle a full match, especially with a, um, very talented guy like Seth Rollins. I would not be surprised if we see all of the, the, uh, shenanigans of WrestleMania 31, uh, with more than likely J&J Security making a return, even Kane making a return, um, probably John Cena and Triple H being in involved in this match. Uh, there's been rumors that basically um, uh, Triple H costing Seth Rollins the championship on accident, and that's what's going to cause the grudge uh, between Rollins and Triple H to grow even more to, you know, before having a match down the road. There's no lock that the WWE Championship match has to happen in a Hell in the Cell, at the Hell in the Cell pay-per-view in Los Angeles. But honestly, you know, I just don't see Sting wrestling in Hell in the Cell. I think this is a one-off. This is all it's going to be. I see C uh, um, Seth Rollins beating Sting, keeping that championship. I wouldn't be surprised if... Um, if Sting did it. I, I remember sitting here um, watching the match where it was Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins for the WWE Championship, and I was so adamant that you know Dean Ambrose, to me, honestly, might one day become WWE Champion. But as of right now, this is the guy that hasn't even conquered the Intercontinental Championship. He hasn't even conquered the United States title. Oh, shit, he did win the United States title. But, um, you know, he hasn't been a guy to really climb his way to the top. I just didn't see him um, on that thing. It wasn't that I didn't like him. It wasn't that I was going to boo the guy if he did. And just, you know, having this huge smile on my face of just being glad that I saw something that I had never seen before when, um, Ambrose beat Rollins and, uh, you know, he, he was holding up a WWE championship. He got that moment in the sun to really sort of put him over, um, before the referee came down and said that, you know, Rollins had bumped the ref, you know, that was a disqualification. Ambrose won, but he's not going to be the champion. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that. I mean, everybody went crazy seeing Sting hold up the WWE Championship over his head, saying that you know, he uh, wanted a shot at it, and um, it was a good way to end Monday Night Raw that week. But uh, lots of questions about this match. We'll have to see what goes down in the foreseeable future, but as of right now, I'm picking Seth to win this one.